Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ashley Wilson and I'm the founder of Rewritten and we exist to help those that have been affected by human trafficking um, heal along their journey. Um, it, is, it is much of a, of a process as we know. Um, and one of those those tools that we want to use to help uh, survivors and others affected by human trafficking um, heal is by music therapy, art therapy, client therapy. There's there's different forms of therapy. But today we have our guests Julie and Liz from Momentum Music, and they're going to share with us, you know, the the segment, the part of of music therapy. But um, first, I want to know how did you even get on this journey? You know, we see what you have now today as Momentum Music, but there had to be a journey to get there. So wh whoever would like to share first. Liz, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> sure. Um, so I, uh, I I came from a musical family growing up. Uh, my, my parents were very involved in music, as were my older siblings. So it was just kind of something that I uh, I was kind of raised in, in the culture of music. And I, I knew as soon as I started thinking about what I wanted to do, when I grew up, um, that I wanted to do something musical, but I didn't really feel like I wanted to be a performer and I didn't really feel like I wanted to be a teacher. And so I was, I was kind of stuck a little bit. Um, and then something that was sad at the time, but ended up being serendipitous kind of happened, uh, which is that my grandmother suffered a stroke, um, which impacted all of our family, very sad. Um, and as part of the uh, trauma that happened with her brain, she had lost her ability to speak. Um, it's, it's very common with, with people who've suffered strokes. Uh, the Wernicke's and Broca's areas are commonly affected. Um, and so she wasn't able to speak anymore after suffering her stroke, but she was still able to sing. Um, and the part of that reason is that music and our memories of music are not just stored in one place of the brain, they're stored all over. And there are all sorts of connections that are lit up when your mind is activated by music and connections are formed that are sometimes otherwise lost. So my, my grandfather's name was Bob. And when my grandmother needed help, she couldn't say, Bob, I need your help. But she could sing when the red, red robin comes, Bob, 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 and along. And that became their little signal between the two of them that she would need some help because she couldn't say Bob, but she could sing Bob, Bob, Bob. Um, and then after that experience, I learned that there's a whole field of study and of work that is involved in helping those people access the, the ways that music is impactful to us and can benefit us and that we can use those music skills and the ways that we as humans relate with music to increase wellness, to heal, to connect with others. And uh, that's when I learned about music therapy and that's what I do now, which is kind of incredible. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Thank yeah. <laughs> Um, for myself, I started piano lessons quite young. Um, the first attempt was to put me in gymnastics class and that didn't go well. <laughs> I'm not very coordinated in that way. So my, my parents were pretty wise to try something different. Um, piano lessons worked out better. Um, so I, I started piano when I was probably about seven years old um, and, and was involved in music really my whole um, childhood growing up in one way or the other, whether it be church or in school. Um, and piano in particular was something that I realized right away um, was sort of a refuge for me when I had a bad day at school. That was what I wanted to come home and do was just play piano, just focus on that and kind of let the rest of my worries sort of fall away. Um, so when I was in high school, um, I needed to choose a topic for a research paper, and um, my mom actually suggested music therapy um, because I was so involved in music. I had no plans to study music whatsoever at that point. It was just a hobby, um, and so I started to research this topic and was just really, I'd never heard about it. I was just really amazed at the um, bringing together of a creative um, career with something that was very like science-based and, um, you know, helping people. So all of these things together just really connected for me. So um, after doing that research paper, I really became a little bit more serious about learning more about this topic um, and really shifted gears. I was, I was going to major in Spanish in college and <laughs> went a really, a really different direction um, and ended up here at um, Mansfield University to study music therapy. Um, and so, you know, my own experience knowing that 
music was so helpful for me to manage anxiety and, you know, things that were a struggle for me, I really connected to and, you know, could personally understand how that could then be something that could help others. Thank you so much, Julie, for sharing. Oh, I think something, you know, were something you cool in, yeah. in hearing our, our two <laughs> stories is that yeah. I think both, it sounds like both of us um, experienced on a personal level the the benefits of interacting with music for your mental health or for recovery yeah. um, in our personal lives first, and then mm -hmm. learned about depression second. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really speaks to the universality of music as healing. Yes. Um, I think it's, it, and I think that when you talk to a lot of music therapists, many of them have a similar story about being impacted by the way music can help us on a personal level first and then a professional level second. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, no, that's, that's a yeah. very good point um, because I feel like to a certain extent, when you have that personal connection, that it makes it even like more impactful when you're working with people because you're mm -hmm. like, I, I already know what you need right now, you know. I'm not musically sound with the piano and all that, but, <laughs> you know, I, I understand on the other end of it, how it can be very helpful, you know, being able to hear it and certain um, music has different effects on your body, different sounds and all of that. So with that, what, what does a, diff, uh, a typical day look like for you all? Wow. Organized chaos. <laughs> It is, you know, an art-based therapy. So mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's a lot of um, freedom in that, which is, you know, one of the wonderful aspects of why it's so effective, because it is adaptable to all different types of people, all different ages. Um, so, it, you know, what specifically we do looks a lot different depending on who we're working with, but the core of what we do with music um, really is, you know, is pretty... Um, consistent across all of those populations because it is something that everybody can relate to on some level. I'll let Liz add any more that she like. Sure. I mean, I, I said organized chaos, um, partly because oh, we lost you for a second, actually. I think you're back. Okay. Yeah. Um, partly because, you know, when you're, when you're working in the, the world of mental health or behavioral health, mm -hmm. um, you could go in with a plan for, for your day and say, I'm, I'm gonna work on this thing with this kid using this intervention. And then they have a, a very different immediate need in that moment. And you have to go, well, time to, time to switch gears. Um, but you know, it's, it's really meeting people where they are at that moment and figuring out where they would like to get to by the end of your time together and finding a way to connect and meet in the music to shift toward that end result, whether that's um, a, a child with aggression issues who I'm working with in a school that I was planning on working on writing a, a song about his experiences today, but I came to the school and he was having a meltdown. So we're just going to work on emotional regulation. We're going to start with really frenzy music to meet him where he's at. But over the course of our half hour, I'm going to slow down what I'm doing. I'm going to decrease my volume. I'm going to decrease my rate of speech and singing and through entrainment, I'm going to bring down his emotions as well to the point where at the end of our time together, he's regulated and ready to continue with his day. That's totally different than what I thought I'd be doing, but it's all about figuring out what the needs are in the moment and using your musical skills and tools to help shift your client toward their goal, whatever that goal is on that day. Yeah, and to add to that, um, because we do have to sort of be ready for everything, um, you'll often see us with <laughs> bags and guitars and lots of equipment hanging off of us or in our uh, cars. We do a lot of itinerant services. So we're, you know, we're going to different schools and community um, locations. And we do really have to have sort of a, an arsenal of instruments and things because we don't know what we might encounter that day. Um, you know, we, we might need to be using drums to help somebody really express a lot of anger. Um, and then, you know, the next minute they might be ready to, you know, like Liz said, play some calmer music. Maybe we'd be playing the guitar, but we're meeting them where they are and using the musical tools of singing and movement and um, playing instruments, songwriting. Um, those are core activities that I would say we do in most sessions to some degree, regardless of what the age is. Um, and you just adapt that to meet the individual needs of that person or that group of people that you're working with. 
I love that because each person is different. So it seems like you guys really take a holistic approach to see, you know, what is best for each client um, rather than this is just always going to work for this specific trauma or this specific student and all. And so that's, that's really great that you guys can be flexible that way. Yeah. And it's even, I mean, what has worked for one person one week might not the next either. And that's, you know, that's like, we all, you know, we all go through cycles of, of different moods and have different things happen in our lives that impact us. So, you know, that can look very different week to week. Um, and we have to be ready for that and, you know, open to, to helping how we can. Mm -hmm. So with, with sharing that, um, I guess, can you give people more of a definition then of what music therapy actually is and, and how it is helping people um, that experience trauma? Um, from, from your personal stories before too, I had wanted to mention, I love that you guys shared different um, spectrums of trauma. Like one could just be like your daily, not saying, not trying to lessen it, but it's yeah. your daily anxieties or stressors that come mm -hmm. on each day. And the other one could be very on the other extreme as far as, you know, what, what you experienced with your, with your grandmother, right? That was your grandmother. Yeah. Um, so there seems to be, this, this can really work for anyone, but, um, you know, any severe trauma, if you, if you think back to any cases that you've had, um, how, what, how does music therapy work in these sessions? So I'm, I'm hearing you ask a couple of different things. And the first yeah. one is, can you tell us what is the definition of music yeah. therapy? I'm so glad to do that. Yeah. Um, so music therapy is the process when done by a credentialed professional, which both Julie Schlosser and I are board certified music therapists. That's a national credential for someone who's gone through a rigorous academic program, completed an internship and passed the certification exam. And we're called board certified music therapists. Um, so music therapy is um, when a, a credentialed professional uses music within a therapeutic relationship with the client to work on non-music based goals. So frequently the, the purpose of music therapy isn't to teach music, it's to work on other things like wellness, like addressing trauma, like developmental goals. Um, one of the, the clients that I'm working with now in the schools, we're, we're learning to play the ukulele because that's something that she was motivated to do. But my purpose is not to have her be a great ukulelist. <laughs> um, my purpose is can you sit down for the three minutes that it takes to play through this song and not leave your chair? Because that's something that your teachers would love for you to work on is staying in your chair. Can you track what's on this paper and figure out where you need to move your fingers at the right time based on this visual cue? Because that's a goal that you're learning in your school setting is that visual tracking and applying multi-step directions. It doesn't have to be ukulele. That's just what worked for her. It could be playing the drums. It could be figuring out a dance routine. It could be writing her own song, but the purpose of it isn't the music itself as much as it is the underlying steps that we're working on to get there. Um, and so that's kind of the crux of music therapy is we're using the relationship that humans have with music to help support them towards the goals that they choose for themselves. Yeah, and I'd add to that that um, nobody needs to come to music therapy being a musician or having any music musical training whatsoever. Um, in fact, that's rarely the case. Um, so, you know, we, through our training, we know how to support a person um, to be able to make music that's satisfying to them, that that accomplishes their goals that they have. Um, but it's between, you know, it's between us, like Liz said, in that therapeutic relationship, it doesn't have to be pretty. What it needs to do is help you express yourself or help you to, um, you know, meet a physical or a social goal. That's mm -hmm. the purpose of it. Um, so, you know, nobody needs to come to us having any musical skills at all. Sometimes they gain musical skills by the work we do together. And then they have a wonderful, you know, coping skill that they can take with them and, and use as a leisure skill. Like I, you know, mentioned with my piano playing which is a, you know a bonus but um nobody needs to feel that they have to be a musician to benefit from being involved in music therapy and I think that an important part of what you were just saying is that it, it's happening within that relationship between the therapist and the client because it's it's one thing if you had a really rough day at work and you're really stressed out and you crank your jam in the car on the way home and you're rocking out and you're getting your emotions out individually it's another thing if you're 
listening to that same music in a room with your music therapist who's taken counseling skills, who's a trained mental health professional who can really start to ask you some questions about your responses to the music, how, it, how, how the music lives in your body, what things are being brought up for you who are trained to, to appropriately handle things that might be triggering with specific songs that come up, particularly when we're working with trauma. Um, things come up, <laughs> trauma, trauma does live in our bodies but so does music. And so we can kind of start to use that as a bridge to access some of the things that are just not ready to be talked about yet, whether it's because of like, like I mentioned with my grandmother who had a stroke, that the language centers of your brain can be impacted by trauma as well. We do know that those are some of the areas that atrophy when you have elevated cortisol for a long time, those language centers start to actually shrivel up a little bit. And so they're your traditional talk therapy. Tell me about your experience. I can't. It's not that I don't want to, it's that my brain's not set up to do that yet. Mm -hmm. um, but because trauma lives in your body and so does music, that can be a really powerful and impactful way to start to unpack those boxes a bit, so to speak, um, without having to use language to get there. Um, we obviously want to process it verbally later if we can and if the client is ready to and in a safe way. Um, but we, we can use nonverbal expression through instrumental music play to kind of circumvent those language centers that are so impacted by trauma and really start to unpack some heavy things without having the the pressure of tell me tell me tell me mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah and i think as well um you know within that relationship where you're providing that safe space with the music and the you know um, mental health professional to express and transform those feelings into something that's power that's positive and constructive um it also gives an opportunity to then as i mentioned learn some so coping skills now how can i take music home with me and use it to manage my stress because it does affect you know us physically it can you know, help us control our rate of breathing and our heart rate and muscle tension and all of those things that are you know part of this stress response um you know that's something we can teach and um share with clients as well so that they have some ownership over you know using those skills day to day as well wow that that was great thank you for sharing that um i'm just like taking it all in what you guys are sharing. And um, I, I really think that's going to help to clarify for a lot of people, because, you know, when you think of music therapy, I think I kind of thought of that too. Like you're learning, you're having to learn, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some uh, instrument or something. And that then, you know, um, I guess helps with the, the trauma, but I'm, I'm hearing from, from you both that it's this relationship and the music and, you know, all of the coping skills, all of it is really what the music therapy is. Um, and I feel that that maybe can be uh, less threatening uh, from someone coming from, especially working with survivors uh, of such complex trauma um, to be able to like calm down for a second first and then let me get my words mm -hmm. out rather than being like investigation mode. Um, that's mm -hmm. not gonna always get out the details that you need. And in a setting that you guys are sharing that seems a, a bit more relaxing, um, what's already there could then be able to flow out um, more, probably more productively than, than that interrogation type feeling, you know, of, like Absolutely. you said, like, let's talk about it and you might not even be ready to even go there yet. So, yeah. And yeah. it's, it can work on all those multiple levels because safety yeah. safety is paramount. Mm -hmm. We need to address safety first. And so if, yeah. yes, absolutely. Music and songwriting and instrumental improvisation can really reach down deep and unpack those things and bring them to the surface. But we're not gonna go there if the client isn't ready to go there, if it's right. not safe to go there. And so we can always fall back to that surface level. Like let's work on regulating our heart rate and our breathing today. Let's right. just focus on our physiological responses first and how we can have more ownership over those and be intentional about it with the music that we're choosing. Maybe on your own, you can think about like, is the music that I'm listening to going to pump my heart rate up even further or is it going to help me bring it down? We, yeah. we can kind of shift levels a little bit. If you need to go deep today, we'll go deep. If it's not safe to do that, we have other things that we can talk about that are still helpful moving forward without pushing you past where it's safe to go. Um, and I also want to mention too, thinking about 
um, survivors of this particular type of trauma, I know often, um, you know, that sense of identity is just really warped or, you know, we really don't even have a sense of that anymore. And having like community connections is something that's very important too. And, you know, if you think about it, music can be a really community oriented sort of an experience. Um, you know, when, when a client would be ready to maybe make music in a group setting or connect to maybe community groups that already exist, you know, that's really going to give them, um, I think a really, a, a boost in their own self-worth that they've you know, accomplish something. It could be learning an instrument in that case, you know, to a degree that they could be part of a, a community group that plays, you know, a town band or something like that. Or it could just be, you know, maybe they like to go to an open mic night and share their music. You know, that wouldn't be every client, but that that option exists mm -hmm. to connect um, in a community setting with music as well, which is really important. Community engagement is one of those protective factors that increases resilience, particularly when coming out of trauma. So that's, yeah, thank you. That's important to mention that that uh, kind of gateway into an existing community of area musicians can be strengthened through, through these experiences in music therapy as well. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, I'm really glad that you brought that up because you know, coming out of that particular lifestyle, having um, support in all different type of aspects is very, very important um, after coming out of complex trauma like that. Um, so that's a, that's a very good point that you brought up. And I heard you speak about the schools and, and being uh, helpful there. Are there other organizations or, or partnerships you form yeah. Um, well, so we we are our own business. We're here in Mansfield. We're behind straw huggers. <laughs> um, and uh, people do kind of come here to our, our studio that we're speaking to you from now for, for private music therapy sometimes. Uh, we're, well, we're very happy to see people in-house here. But as Julie mentioned earlier, we are itinerant. We go lots of different places. Um, I do see some of my clients in their own homes. Um, as well as partnering through the school. Uh, just earlier this afternoon, I was at the Mansfield Active Living Center um, to work with, with uh, well seniors um, on things like connection and brain challenges, not so much like the, the memory care that you would get in like an Alzheimer's unit at a nursing home, but just ways to get them involved and engaged in that community portion that we were talking about, making those connections, having that support system in place and, and really trying to encourage wellness and activeness um, throughout as they as they gracefully age. <laughs> Um, we're excited too. actually a new uh, community connection we have is with the Drug Endangered Children's Alliance, mm -hmm. um, which is doing lots of great work right now um, across the area. So we're going to be offering some um, early childhood classes that we hope will be a good resource for families to sort of, you know, recognize the developmental benefits of being involved in music with the little one, but also that bonding um, and, you know, nourishing the parent-child relationship that can happen within music too. Um, we, we have a lot of partnerships throughout the summer with different organizations, uh, local libraries and some um, early childhood centers. Um, I'm trying to think of what we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> yes. Um, so Partners in Progress is another agency that we've had a, a good working relationship with over the years mm -hmm. that has kind of evolved as their agency grows and as our business has grown with our the ways in which we uh, collaborate has, has looked like a couple of different things. Um, we do music activities at their camp partners program that's inclusive for children with and without disabilities. Um, we've been part of their partner summer autism BSAP partner <laughs> program. There's lots of acronyms that we have to keep track of. <laughs> I'm like, I just call it PSAP, yeah. um, which, is, which is specifically for uh, for autistic individuals over the summer um, as part of maybe like a secondary thing that's aside from extended school year and they can come to Partners in Progress and work on some of their, their life skills and we've provided music therapy there as well. Um, we've started to do some weekly mental health groups at some of their group homes um, to just sort of work on like, again, that resilience, that coping, those activities of daily living, those life skills um, through through using music. Um, so that's it's been a big partner partnership with partners in progress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too many partners in that word. Um, that's, that's been a, a a strong a strong community partnership mm -hmm. over several years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we hope that sometime in the future we will have one with rewritten as well. So <laughs> oh, man, we would love it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I know that I learned a lot today, and I hope that others that are watching 
um, learned a lot. And, and we just appreciate you, Liz and Julie, for all the work that you were doing in the community and to help children and adults and, and all of the clientele you have. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for taking time to let us talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can tell we're, we're both really jazzed about the ways, jazzed <laughs> about the ways in which we use a musical term there. But yeah. <laughs> no uh, just about, about the way that engaging with music can enrich people's lives of, of all walks of life and all stages. And we just thank you for the opportunity to get to, to share a little bit about what we do. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely can see the passion and I appreciate that. Um, if people want to get in in contact with you all and uh, either maybe book an appointment or um, have you come to an event or whatever it may be, how can they get in contact with you? Probably the easiest way is to visit our website. Um, that's MomentumMusicServices.com, which is all one long word. <laughs> um, and, and you'll find information on our programs there and our contact information. Um, but um, we are hoping that we will be moving to a new location here very shortly, maybe in the next few months. So some of that may change. So just kind of, you could visit there or our Facebook page as well to kind of maybe keep more current with what's happening with that. We'd Is still Mansfield? Are you able to share or not? Yes, yes. yes. still in yeah. Mansfield, across the street, not far. Yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're outgrowing our space, which is a fantastic problem to have. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And it is a beautiful space for anyone who's even interested. It is beautiful inside there. So you guys are doing a great job physically and, you know, <laughs> in connections. <laughs> well, thank you guys again. And um, as has been shared, um, reach out to Julie and Liz if you, if anyone has any questions on this topic, or if you yourself realize that you need these services, or you can share them with someone else who might need these services. Um, have a good day. Thank you so much again for joining us. Thank right. you. Thanks, Ashley.